Okay, in this video I want to talk about finding arc length of a function. <clears throat> and all you're doing when you're finding arc length is, you know, you've got some curve between um, the x-coordinates of a and b. Just imagine if you could kind of pick this curve up and if it was like a piece of string and if you could pull it straight and kind of measure it, how long it would be. That's all you're doing when you're finding arc length. <clears throat> and again, I think that's probably what most people understand it to be anyway, but just in case. The formula says if your uh, function is in the form y equals f of x, um, if the x-coordinates are from a to b, it says to calculate arc length, again, it's pretty straightforward. You integrate from a to b, you take the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. Okay, so just alternate notation for the derivative, dy dx. If your function was in the form x equals g of y, so maybe it's a function of, of y, um, a couple things would change now. Uh, one thing, we would now need to know the uh, limits of integration on the y-axis. Okay, so kind of the highest y value and the smallest uh, y value. Those would be our limits of integration. And then again, we would just take the derivative of that function and square it equivalently dx dy squared. I think most of my examples are going to correspond to my first case. Actually, I think both of them are. Um, but again, there's nothing real deep or complicated, I, I think, if you... Um, switch them out. So, okay, let's, uh, let's do an example here. Okay, so again, two um, fairly, I think, uh, straightforward examples. Okay, so again, um, so here we want to find the length of the curve, one-third um, x squared plus two raised to the three-halves between x equals zero and one. So the zero and one are going to give us our limits of integration. So again, we have to calculate this one plus f prime of x squared quantity and maybe I should put that in brackets again to uh, use proper notation so again y or equivalently f of x that's our function one-third x squared plus two raised to the three-halves power um, so I usually start just by taking the derivative of it okay so the one-third is along for the ride the three-halves will come out front We'll get x squared plus 2 to the 1 half power, and then we'll multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is simply 2x. Okay, we can clean this up. The 3's cancel, the 2's will cancel, and we're just left with x times x squared plus 2 raised to the 1 half power. So again, that's our derivative. So if I take the derivative and I square it, Okay, well that's going to be the same thing as obviously taking what we just found and squaring it out. And we have to square both pieces, so we'll get x squared. And if you multiply the exponents, or again you're squaring a square root, you'll just get x squared plus 2. And if we multiply that, it says we get x to the fourth plus 2x squared. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is add 1 to that. So if I add 1 to that, I guess I shouldn't stick it there necessarily. Um, so if I add 1 to it, well, let's stick it on there. We'll just add 1, and I'll add 1 there. Okay, so it says basically this is now what goes underneath the square root. So it says we'll get from 0 to 1 of the square root of x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 dx and this is kind of the trick it seems like most of these arc length formula or problems at least the ones I've run into um, a lot of times the goal is to write this stuff underneath the square root as something squared well if you think about it I believe we can write x to the fourth plus 2x squared as x squared plus 1 quantity squared so foil, the, foil this out, um, I think you'll see pretty quickly that you do get x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. Well, the benefit of that is if you have um, the square root of something squared, you just get what is underneath there. So we're simply left with x squared plus 1 in this case. dx, and now it's easy. So we'll get x to the third over 3 
plus x from 0 to 1. Plug in our upper limit of integration, you'll get 1 third plus 1. The lower limit of integration, you'll just be subtracting off zeros. So it says the length of that curve is 4 thirds. So obviously for these two, um, since we're talking about a length of something, it should clearly um, always work out to be a positive number. So if you get a negative number, something's wrong. Okay. So um, I'm going to do another one of these, very similar in flavor. Um, I think I, I've noticed a tendency for on this problem for people to to um, kind of kind of make a couple little mistakes. So that's why I'm doing this next problem. Again, nothing real deep though. Okay, so this is for x values between two and four. Okay, so already, you know, again, these are basically giving you your limits of integration, just like in the last example. Okay, so we know our limits of integration. Again, I basically have to figure out what goes, you know, I have to figure out the one prime, the one plus the derivative of um, f squared dx. Okay, from two to four in this case. So we know that our f of x is the function um, x squared over 2 minus ln of x over 4. So now again, it's very mechanical. Just take the derivative. Um, we'll get 2x over 2, or just x. Remember, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so we'll get 1 over 4x. If I take the derivative and square that, Okay, that means I'd have to, again, FOIL it out. So be careful here with your algebra. Um, so x and x is x squared. We'll get x times 1 over 4x. The x's will cancel. That'll leave us with negative 1 fourth. Same thing on the inside. The x's will cancel. We'll get minus 1 fourth. And then on the outside, we'll get a positive 1 over 16 x squared. Um, so that gives us x squared minus 1 half plus 1 over 16 x squared. Okay, so this is just the derivative squared. Remember, we need to add 1 to that. Well, if I add 1 to this, um, let me fix this here. Let me scroll down here a little bit. So if I add 1 to this, 1 plus f prime of x quantity squared, well, if I add 1 to the negative 1 half, I'm going to get x squared plus 1 half plus 1 over 16 x squared. Okay, so now, again, this is what all goes underneath the square root here in our, in our example. So we've still got the integral from 2 to 4. The square root of x squared plus 1 half plus 1 over 16 x squared. So let me give myself some room here. dx. Okay, and again, this doesn't look like something probably uh, right off the bat that you would recognize as factoring. But again, the trick of these is it seems like a lot of times the stuff underneath the square root ends up being a perfect square. If this were going to be a perfect square, I think, well, what would it be? It would have to be x and x. That'll give me my x squared. To get the, the 1 over 16, I would need a 1 fourth and a 1 fourth, either positive or negative. And to get the x squared, I would have to have x's in the denominator. And for the middle term to be positive, it would have to be a plus and a plus. And if you multiply this out, I think you will get x squared plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. That'll give you your 1 half. And then you'll get your 1 over 16 x squared. So really now we're just integrating from 2 to 4, this quantity squared. So you just get x plus 1 over 4x dx. And that gives you x squared over 2 plus 1 fourth, the natural logarithm of x. Um, and now all you have to do is plug in your limits of integration from 4 to 2. So if we plug 4 in, we get 4 squared, which is 16 over 2, or 8 plus 1 fourth the natural logarithm of 4 minus the lower limit 2 squared over 2 um, is going to be 2 plus 1 fourth the natural logarithm of 2 um, you know you can combine your logarithms and those things but I'm not worried about it mainly because I think I'm out of time so hope these examples help if you have any questions shoot me an email and uh, just let me know